Bon dia, benvinguts a aquest acte d'investidura de la doctora Linda Haiken com a doctora honoris causa de la Universitat de Vic, Universitat Central de Catalunya. Doctor Josep Arimany, primer tinent d'alcalde de l'Ajuntament de Vic i president de la Fundació per als Estudis Superiors en Ciències de la Salut. Doctora Àngels Crucella, secretària general. Doctora Paola Galvany, de gana de la Facultat de Ciències de la Salut i el Benestar i padrina de la doctoranda. Directors de la Fundació Universitària Balmes i de la Fundació Universitària dels Estudis Superiors en Ciències de la Salut. Doctora president del Consorci Hospitalari de Vic, membres del patronat de la Fundació Universitària Balmes, senyors Guixà, Granero i Torres, doctora Sobirana, vicerrectors de la Universitat de Vic, Universitat Central de Catalunya, membres del Consell de Direcció, de Gans, Gerent, i representants de les universitats Autònoma de Barcelona, Rovira Virgili i Universitat de Barcelona, membres representants de totes les institucions sanitàries del país, molt volgudes infermeres d'arreu de Catalunya que avui heu vingut, benvingudes, companys i companyes, senyores i senyors. Com a rector de la Universitat de Vic, Universitat Central de Catalunya, em fa una il·lusió especial constituir aquest claustre extraordinari avui dilluns 29 de maig del 2017 per tal d'investir a la senyora Linda Aiken com a doctora honoris causa de la nostra universitat. L'acte que anem a començar tindrà alguns parlaments en anglès. Qui tingui dificultats per seguir-los, cal que sàpiga que en el llibret que els hem donat hi ha totes les intervencions traduïdes al català. Demano a la doctora Àngels Crucella, secretària general, que llegeixi l'acord del Consell de Direcció i del Patronat de la Fundació Universitària Balmes pel qual se li concedeix el títol de doctora honoris causa. El Consell de Govern de la Universitat de Vic, Universitat Central de Catalunya, a proposta de la Facultat de Ciències de la Salut i el Benestar i l'Escola de Doctorat, va acordar el dia 4 d'abril de 2017 d'elevar al patronat de la Fundació Universitària Balmes la proposta de concessió del títol de doctora honoris causa per la Universitat de Vic, Universitat Central de Catalunya, a la doctora Linda Aiken, per la decisiva contribució de la seva recerca a prestigiar la professió infermera a tot el món, a valorar la seva contribució a la recuperació i la qualitat de vida dels pacients i a reconèixer el seu paper en el bon funcionament de la institució hospitalària. Posteriorment, el patronat de la Fundació Universitària Balmes, a proposta del Consell de Govern de la Universitat de Vic, Universitat Central de Catalunya, en sessió ordinària celebrada el dia 11 de maig de 2017, va aprovar la concessió del títol de doctora honoris causa a la doctora Linda Aiken. Gràcies, secretària general. Demano a la doctora Paula Galvany, de gana de la Facultat de Ciències de la Salut i padrina de la doctoranda, que faci entrar a la senyora Linda Aiken a la sala. Els prego que es posin drets per rebre la doctoranda.
And now I give the floor to Dr. Paola Galvan, the sponsor of the doctoral candidate. Bon dia. Com a degana de la Facultat de Ciències de la Salut i el Benestar, em correspon de fer l'apadrinament de la doctora Linda Aiken, tot i que la facultat va decidir de demanar per a ella el títol de doctora honoris causa de la universitat abans de la meva arribada com a degana. Així doncs, el mèrit d'aquesta investidura que la Universitat de Vic, Universitat Central de Catalunya, concedeix a la doctora Aiken no em correspon a mi, sinó a la doctora Mireia Subirana, que amb tots els mereixements ens farà la laudatio. A mi em correspon d'expressar l'agraïment de la Facultat de Ciències de la Salut i el Benestar i de tants i tants professionals d'infermeria de tot el món a la doctora Aiken pel treball constant, persistent i de gran nivell en l'àmbit de la recerca infermera. Els professionals d'infermeria són persones al servei de les persones, persones dedicades, voluntarioses, amb un fort impuls vocacional. Però aquestes mateixes virtuts són sovint mal gestionades per institucions que no valoren adequadament la seva aportació als resultats globals. La doctora Aiken ha deixat clara la professionalitat d'aquestes persones i en reclama titulació universitària en tots els casos. Una càrrega professional adequada per al bé dels pacients, dels professionals i de la mateixa institució i unes condicions de treball i un tracte dignes i professionals. És a dir, la doctora Aiken ha treballat tota la seva vida per a la millora i la professionalització de la professió infermera. Sí, la doctora Aiken té raó quan demana titulació universitària per als professionals. Ha de garantir uns coneixements suficients i adequats, la titulació universitària confereix un estatus de rigor, de respectabilitat i de suficiència acadèmica i posa bases sòlides per a una formació permanent. Té raó quan justifica la càrrega laboral ha de ser ajustada a les necessitats de les cures i els requeriments de tracte humà per a una millor recuperació del pacient en tots els casos i nivells, perquè tot i que sembla una obvietat, les obvietats també requereixen una demostració científica contrastada, que és la que ha dut a terme la doctora Aiken. I això lliga plenament amb les condicions de treball adequades i dignes, un sou adequat, un tracte just i respectuós, una consideració laboral ajustada a la legalitat i als requeriments de les tasques que s'han de desenvolupar, una comunicació oberta permanent amb altres professionals de la salut, com per exemple els metges i també la gerència, etc. Per això mateix, la doctora Aiken i el seu grup de recerca varen crear el distintiu Magnet per distingir els hospitals que saben atreure i retenir el talent d'infermeria, que impulsen una cultura col·laborativa i en els quals els pacients obtenen bons resultats i se senten ben tractats. En fi, no vull entrar a fer una descripció de les virtuts de la tasca de la doctora Aiken, sinó justificar per què el seu nom va ser escollit a la facultat com a exemple d'investigadora rigorosa i influent en l'àmbit de la infermeria. La doctora Aiken és una investigadora exemplar per als nostres estudiants, el nostre professorat, i volem que el seu treball els seus assoliments i la influència de la seva recerca siguin coneguts i tinguts com a modèlics. És per aquesta raó que hem demanat que sigui investida doctora honoris causa per la nostra universitat. Moltes gràcies. I give the floor to Dr. Mireia Subirana, former Dean of the Faculty of Health Services and Welfare of the University of Big Central University of Catalonia, to give the oration for the doctoral candidate. Dear Rector, dear Dr. Arimany, dear Professor Aiken, Distinguished colleagues from other universities, distinguished guests, professors, nurses, nurses students, ladies and gentlemen, estimats amics, I'm truly honored to be here 
to recognize and celebrate the outstanding, the outstanding academic and research achievements of Professor Aiken as a global leader in nursing and health services and policy research, and one of the most high-profile policy thoughts leaders and prolific nurse in the world. All those who are present are aware of the candidate's merits, which I will, of course, detail. However, first, I would like to congratulate Professor Aiken for the recent award, the International Council of Nurses, Prof. Uh, Christian Remain Prize. This world rewarded award is presented every four years to a nurse who has made a significant impact on nursing profession internationally or through the nursing profession for benefit of humanity. Professor Aiken received the award at the International Council of Nursing Congress in Barcelona just two days ago. So, congratulations, or oh, what we say in Catalan, moltes felicitats. <clears throat> Professor Aiken has received many major research awards in her field of nursing and health services and policy research. In 2003, she was awarded the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations, Ernest Amorio Coward Award, for the leadership utilizing performance measurements to demonstrate relationships between nursing care and patients' outcomes. This award was named in memory of Ernest Codman, the physician regarded in healthcare as the father of outcome measurement whose lifelong pursuit was to establish a system to track the outcomes of patient treatment because he believed that all of this information should be made public so that patients could be guided in their choices of physicians and hospitals. In 2005, Dr. Aikin received the Distinguished Investigation Award from the Academy of Health and, of Health, and in 2006, the Baxter Graham Prize in Health Services Research from the Association of University Programs in Health Administration. More recently, in 2013, the Consortium of University for Global Health named Dr. Aikin as the winner of the Amber and Paris Vale Project of the Year Award for Health Global Research using performance measurements to demonstrate the critical impact of nursing on hospital patients' outcomes. In 2014, she received the Gustav of Linen Award from the National Academy of Medicine for her research, which has impacted practice and policies in the United States and more than 13 other countries. Dr. Aikin currently is the Claire Faggy Professor in Nursing, Professor of Sociology, Director and Founder of Penn Nursing Center for Health Outcomes and Policy Research, and Senior Fellow of the Leonard Davis Institute of Health Economics at the University of Pennsylvania. In 1976, she was elected Fellow of the American Academy of Nursing, and in 1998 became Honorary Fellow of the Royal College of Nursing in the United Kingdom. On the basis of her leadership and for her exceptional contribution to nurses and health care. Before joining the University of Pennsylvania faculty in 1988, Dr. Aikin served as a vice president of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. She is a member of the Institute of Medicine, a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Science, and of the National Academy of Social Injury, a former president of the American Academy of Nursing a Distinguished Fellow of the Academy of for Health Services Research and Health Policies, and a member of the Council of the Economic Impact on Health System Change. Dr. Aikin served on the Medicare Physician Payment Reviewing Commission for six years, and was a member of the 1982 Social Security Advice Council of the President Clinton's National Health Reform Task Force. Her recent work, for which she received the Sigma Theta Tau's International Clinical Research Award in 1999, has focused on accounting for variations in hospital patients' outcomes in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Germany. Dr. Aiken grew up in Gainesville, Florida, a college town in which her family life was centered around the activities at the University of Florida. Since as long as she can remember, she wanted to be a nurse. Her role mentor was Dorothy Smith, who was the dean of the School of Nursing. 
She received her bachelor's and master's degree in nursing from the University of Florida, Gainesville, and her doctoral in sociology and demography from the University of Texas, Austin. The achievement of a safe, high-quality care is the aim of every healthcare organization. While healthcare, is the late, while healthcare in the late 20th century was dominated by concerns with effectiveness and efficiency, due to the widening gap between available resources and needs, something more is required in the 21st century. Don Birwick introduced the triple aim into the healthcare lexicon, proposes focus uh, on three dim dimensions of performance, improving health of populations as well as patient experience of care and reducing the per capita cost of health care. Recently, Bodenheimer states that it is necessary to add the goal of improving the work life of health providers as a guarantee that it is possible to achieve the triple aim. As far as I know, improving the quality of work life will ultimate enhance the overall quality of care. The work by Dr. Aikin and colleagues exemplify this line of research. Her focus is to determine how the organizational context of healthcare can be modified to promote and improve patient outcomes. Dr. Aikin's pioneer research has created an evidence base showing the importance of nurses caring for fewer patients each, having most nurses with bachelor's or higher qualifications, and improving nurses' work environments. Dr. Aikin documented that uh, thir the 30 days mortality of the common surgical procedures increased by 7% for each additional patient added to a nurse. And for each 10% increase in nurses with bachelor's degrees, there was a 5 to 7% decline in risk-adjusted mortality. She has also demonstrated that organizations that support professional nursing practice by involving nursing in decision-making have better patient outcomes than much organizations with poor work environments. Dr. Aiken said that nurses hold the key to provide safer, more effective care and achieving better outcomes for, hospi for hospitalized patients. In another study, Dr. Aiken and colleagues from Penn Nursing Penn's Leonard Davis Institute of Health Economics and the Children's Hospitals of Philadelphia demonstrate that better nurses' work environments produce higher value of care by achieving lower mortality with similar or lower cost, especially for high-risk surgical patients. With the aim to improve health outcomes through research and policy, Dr. Aiken conducts research on healthcare workforce and quality of healthcare in the United States and globally, and is the author of more than 300 scientific papers. Dr. Aiken has directed studies on the impact of nursing on patient outcomes in over 30 countries. Her seminal research demonstrating the impact of adequate nurse staffing on improving patient outcomes is widely used as basic for manager and policy decision making. California, development of a state's mandated nursing to patient ratio in hospitals and public reporting of these ratios in another state were influenced by Dr. Aiken's research. Beyond the United States, her research was key to adopt of safe nurse staffing mandates in Wales, Ireland, the states of Quinlan, Australia. The National Academy of Medicine in 2010 recommendation was that 8% of the US, US nurses have a bachelor degree by 2020. An European Parliament in 2013 made the decision to recommend university education for nurses in the European Union, based on ICANN research. To expand and refine typical forecasting models with factors that take into account how features of work environments and qualification of nurses' workforce impact on nursing retentions, burnout among nurses and patients' outcomes, Dr. Aiken and Dr. Selmond from Catholic University of Lyon, Belgium, led the Registered Nurse Forecasting Project. The large nurse workforce study ever conducted to inform policy on the nursing workforce. Funded under the seven framework program of the European Commission, a consortium broad research from 12 European countries, Belgium, Finland, Germany, Greece, Ireland, Norway, Poland, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, the Netherlands and England. The, U 
la US, Botswana, China i Sud-àfrica. To extend the North American line of research to an Europe context with a global perspective. The study adds to accuracy of forecasting models and generate new approach to the more effective management of nursing resources by addressing not only the volumes, but the quality of nursing staff as well as quality of patient care. At this stage, it is essential to know what works, from whom, when, where, in what circumstances, and why it might work, and from whose perspective. Only through this approach do nurses have the potential to contribute to answer these complex programs and build new knowledge. We need to continue on her trajectory of advancing the quality of care and health care policies and better coordinate our knowledge and advancing its efforts. I'm very proud of my university, which would not have given an honorary doctorate to a nurse without being sure that the discipline of nursing as a whole is equal to other disciplines in generation, dissemination and translation of knowledge. Through this award, the University of Vic Central University of Catalonia acknowledging the discipline and have made a commitment to find financial and structural support the advancement of nursing knowledge in this university and in this country. Dr. Aiken's academic work exemplifies the need in research in nursing to focus practice and the importance to try to understand the mechanism, structure and process variables that explain difference in patients' outcomes. She is therefore a theorist of nursing management and policies, as well as an authority on nursing shortage around the world, as it is reflected by her work and hours. Dr. Aiken led the effort to improve clinical work environments for nurses when she was president of the American Academy of Nursing in 1979. This led to the development of the Manic Recognition Program, a voluntary accreditation program for nursing that represents a high quality working environment for nurses and results in better outcomes. In early 2016, Aiken's commitment uh, $1 million to endorse the Linda Harmon Aiken Professorship to support excellent in nursing research at the College of Nursing. She also presented with a special legacy award in recognition of her commitment to college, the University of Florida, and the nursing profession. For all these reasons, academics, professional, professional and personal, and her worldwide involvement, I believe that the appointment of Dr. Linda H. Aiken as a doctor honoris causa by the University of Vic, Central University of Catalonia, is justified and is highly deserved following Dr. Aiken's other honorary degree, such as Doctor of Science Honoris Causa, King's College, London, October 2015, Doctor of Science Honoris Causa, University of Maryland, May 2011, Honorary Doctor of Science, University of Florida, Gainesville, May 2006, Honorary Doctor of Human Letters, State University of New York, May 2006, Doctor of Science Honoris Causa, Emory University, May 2000. Doctor of Science Honoris Causa, Georgetown University, May uh, 1999. And Doctor of Science Honoris Causa, University of Wisconsin, of Wisconsin Madison, May uh, 1993. Dear Dr. Aiken, I extend to you, on behalf of my colleagues and myself, our deepest admiration and gratitude for your work and wisdom and for inspire us to work towards establish and deliver equitable care models based on evidence and for all populations. There is an urgent need for healthcare system to set better nursing practice and policies, to, morph, to move towards an understanding of patient priorities and rethinking healthcare to be led by patients' preference and values. Thank you very much. Thank you for that magnificent speech. I would now like to ask uh, Linda Aiken to approach the table. Uh, by the authority invested in me, 
I conferred on you the title of Honorary Doctor of the University of Big Central University of Catalonia. I award you this diploma. and the Honorary Doctorate Medal. Uh, we are delighted to welcome you to the University of Big Central University of Catalonia as a fellow lector. And I embrace you in a friendship on this great occasion. Great. And now, now I call on the new honorary doctor, Dr. Linda Aiken, to say a few words. <clears throat> President, rector, uh, fellow faculty, students, nurses, the beautiful choir, what a wonderful, wonderful honor and a beautiful ceremony. The most beautiful ceremony I've ever been a part of. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm very honored. <laughs> and I will treasure this. I will wear it at graduation at the University of Pennsylvania. I will be the envy of all of my faculty <laughs> colleagues. Thank you, thank you so much, it's beautiful. So I wanted to say a few words today about my research on the impact of nursing on patient outcomes. And the first point I'd like to make uh, is that nurses have long been respected and appreciated worldwide. In the United States, we have a Gallup poll about what is the most respected profession. And nurses are always at the top of the poll. So nurses have the respect of the public. Uh, they are honored for their service for patients. But they tend to be in the background as far as policy discussions and resource allocations are mentioned. And so our research is to raise the question about whether nurses have a more fundamental role than has been appreciated in achieving good health and good outcomes for health services. And so our program of research has been documenting the the impact of nursing on patient outcomes and whether 
it would be more appropriate for nursing to be brought into our discussions about the foreground of healthcare and central to how we consider resources and an era of scarce resources and to be considered in policy decisions. So over time, as nursing has been respected by the public for caring, being there at the transitions of life from birth to death, there's been a very large change in the role that nurses uh, provide in healthcare. Uh, the technology and the scientific basis of healthcare has changed dramatically. We have more knowledge than we used to have, and that's uh, resulted in nurses taking over some of the roles that have in history been provided by physicians. At the same time that the technology and the content of healthcare is changing, the institutions in which doctors and nurses practice have also changed from an organizational perspective, and they've become larger and more complicated. And so the roles of nursing have changed dramatically from taking on more and more important roles in healthcare, as well as serving in managerial roles to keep our complicated healthcare systems functioning. And so we have larger hospitals and clinics, we have more doctors, more nurses, more other kinds of workers in settings. Uh, we have added administrative layers in all of our hospitals and other settings and more and more of our administrators come from backgrounds that are not clinical, but more out of financing and economy. And so many uh, landmark international studies have cited evidence in all of our countries that uh, the quality of care across our healthcare systems is lacking in some respects, it's not as coordinated as it should be. It is not exactly the mix of services that our population needs. Uh, and that the quality of care is uneven from hospital to hospital in all of our countries, and even from practice to practice in the community. And so both those of us who work in healthcare and governments are seeking to bolster healthcare quality in all of our healthcare settings, as well as improve patient safety and satisfaction, and to do so in a way that our countries can afford uh, to create a high quality healthcare system. And so governments are faced with increasingly difficult challenges of taking finite resources and deciding where to get the most value for the money available. So what our research is doing is it's trying to understand the relationship between the number of nurses in a healthcare system, their education, the quality of the context in which they work, and their value to the healthcare system. So in terms of documenting the contributions of nurses to quality of care, we've been working over 25 years to build a rigorous uh, scientific uh, basis for making more informed policy decisions at the government level and managerial decisions in large healthcare organizations that looks at what I call the modifiable features of the nursing workforce. There are some things in our healthcare system that are difficult to change. An example would be how large our hospitals are. Of course, we could close beds and create smaller hospitals, but that's a very difficult thing to do. But less difficult is to change the number of nurses that are employed by a hospital, the educational levels, and particularly to improve the quality of the clinical setting so that the care provided by nurses is more efficient. So indeed, our research pro provides a strong scientific evidence base that having a highly qualified professional nurse workforce 
with evidence-based patient to uh, nurse ratios, meaning there are enough nurses in hospitals to really produce the quality of care that's desired within healthcare and by the public, and also providing care in environments that enable nurses to be effective and efficient in their care. And when we have all of those things together, our program of research shows that outcomes improve and the value and overall cost of care uh, is also uh, reduced. So we studied the association between the features of nursing and patient outcomes in thousands of hospitals in over 30 countries, with the countries representing all the major parts of the world, and selected for being differently organized and financed and resourced. So we're interested to know what is the generic relationship between nursing and patient outcomes in every kind of health system uh, in the world, and how do we make decisions to produce uh, greater quality. And so what we found through these studies is that in different countries uh, that have different forms of healthcare organization, centralized, decentralized, largely public, partly private, that uh, nursing, the relationship between nursing and patient outcomes is remarkably similar. So it, although some of the details of staffing and education differ in the US from Spain, there are more things that are similar between the relationship between nursing and patient outcomes in our two countries that might be expected. And we find that there is tremendous variation within countries in terms of, for example, mortality in hospitals that cannot be explained by how sick the patients are. So our research has documented that variation, which is not well understood by the public, that every hospital is not the same in terms of your odds of having a good outcome. And that then we're interested to know if there are any hospitals within each country that perform better than other hospitals, because if there are better performing hospitals in the same kind of economic environment, suggests that other hospitals can perf uh, improve their performance as well. So we found that even in countries like England that have a highly centralized national health system, and the expectation in England is of a similar uh, standard of care in all communities, that the actual uh, outcomes in the National Health Service in England are actually quite varied and more varied than one would expect from a national system. And we find that the differences in mortality, uh, infection rates, falls with injuries, uh, decubitus ulcers, all of the performance measures that we look at very substantially within countries, even after we take into account uh, differences in the severity of illness of the patients and the resources, other resources of the hospitals like medical care, technology, and such. So our research asks to what extent are differences in patient outcomes across hospitals explained by variation in nurse staffing, in the quality of the clinical work environment, in communications between doctors and nurses, and in the education and qualifications of the nursing staff. So we find that the significant variation across hospitals within the same country in all of these features of nursing uh, is explaining a major part of the variation in outcomes like mortality and the fact that there are such big differences in staffing and other aspects of nursing suggests that uh, leaders in different hospitals are using different strategies to use the resources that they have. So we're trying to create a more rigorous evidence base to guide decision making. On nurse staffing, 
We've conducted extensive research on the association of nurse staffing levels, divided by the average number of patients that each professional nurse is responsible for. Whereas countries differ in what the average workload of a nurse would be. I mentioned earlier that in the United States, the average nurse would care for no more than five patients each. I think we have some nurses in the audience that will know that your average is quite a bit higher than that. But even so, there's great variation in our hospitals about what the average is. And we found in our study of Spain also great variation here. So uh, what we find when we look at that variation is that the fewer patients each nurse is responsible for, the better the outcomes for patients. And uh, has been previously cited, we find uh, in hospitals across North America, uh, in Europe, the uh, 15 countries we studied here, four countries in Asia, so forth, that we find the same relationship remarkably, that each one patient added to a nurse's workload is associated with about a 7% increase in mortality following common surgery, and a similar uh, relationship among patients that go to the hospital for other reasons. We also find that in hospitals in which nurses care for fewer patients each, that the rate of expensive complications, and this has to do with the business case for hiring more nurses, that if, you, if nurses have fewer patients each, then the rate of hospital acquired infections, falls, re hospital readmissions within 30 days are also lower and uh, patient satisfaction is much higher so that the actual cost of hiring more nurses is more than offset for the savings that is prevented from having expensive complications. So uh, employing uh, professional nurses is expensive and hospital managers are commonly assuming that money can be saved by reducing the number of professional nurses employed, but our research shows that having the right number of nurses, that is having the number of nurses really needed uh, in terms of the population being cared for is the best way to produce good outcomes at the lowest possible cost. Uh, because nurses, with too few nurses, are creating uh, these expensive complications. It's also assumed by hospital managers and some policymakers in a number of countries around the world that the mix of professionals in hospitals could be altered to save money so that workers with less education and theoretically lower wages could be substituted for nurses. But our research shows that uh, that cannot be done safely because the substitution of less trained people for nurses impacts mortality and it saves no money because the expensive complications of care uh, take up any money that would have been saved by substitution. So we show in a study of European hospitals that includes Spain that substituting one nurse assistant for every 25 patients instead of adding a nurse is associated with a 21% increase in patient deaths. So a very large impact of a managerial idea that seems to make some common sense, but you know, we're in a university and we are looking for an evidence base for these decisions. And so this is a very rigorous study, not the only one, it takes into account how sick the patients are and many other aspects, shows that it's dangerous in terms of patient outcomes to substitute lower level people for nurses and it doesn't save any money either. Hospital work environments are very, very important, and this has been a hallmark of our work. Every person who's been hospitalized or works in a hospital has observed that the hospital staff seem very busy, uh, too busy often to explain treatments or for patients to request help in a timely way. And the signs of hurried care are often due to too few budgeted positions for nurses. 
Uh, additionally, our research across many countries and thousands of hospitals has documented that the clinical care environment, particularly in hospitals, is disorganized and chaotic. And often communication is poor between the health professionals there. So our research shows that in all of the countries we've studied, on average, every nurse in a hospital is interrupted in mid-task once an hour. And that is, A, a very dangerous thing to happen, and B, uh, makes the nursing shortage even worse than it is because it's undermining the efficiency. So our research has pioneered in the development of survey measures to monitor the quality of nurse work environments, and that we've demonstrated that patient outcomes in hospitals with nurse and work environments suffer. Even after taking into account differences in nurse staffing across hospitals, our published research in leading international scientific journals like The Lancet and the BMJ and the New England Journal of Medicine all show that poor work environments are associated with preventable deaths, more infections, more readmissions, longer hospital stays, and lower patient satisfactions. So, the improving the work environment in hospitals is a very cost-effective lever to improving quality of care. So in summary, our program of research over three decades has produced more than 300 scientific papers published in uh, highly impactful interdisciplinary and policy journals. Uh, we find uh, that professional nursing returns good, very good value to hospitals and health system because excellent nursing care prevents expensive complications. And our results show that national policies, and this is a particular message to Spain, national policies limited the number, limiting the number of budgeted positions for nurses and thus forcing nurses to leave the country to seek jobs elsewhere or to take on part-time work for long periods is not in the public's interest and is a tremendous waste of resources in your own country. So you have one of the best educated nurse workforces in the world, all with baccalaureate education. Other countries would be happy to have Spanish nurses, and Spanish nurses are leaving in large numbers to work elsewhere. But those, that's a national resource of Spain. And so I think in a very important um, initiative that we're trying to generate here in, Pan, uh, here in Spain with our study is to challenge that idea that it's good economic policy or good health policy to limit the number of employed positions in your healthcare system. There are a lot of countries that don't have enough nurses. You have nurses and great nurses. And so not to use them in your own country is a shame and results in poorer care than is necessary for the people that live here. Our research has had major impact in uh, countries throughout the world, motivating some governments to change their healthcare workforce policies. An example, may be relevant for Spain, is Ireland that was on a pathway similar to Spain in reducing the uh, number of workers in the healthcare system as a response to the economic recession. As recently said, we're not doing that anymore. Opened up employment of nurses, so they've gone from not employing a single nurse that graduated from a university in Ireland, now back to employing many of the nurses. And so Ireland has now introduced legislation requiring hospitals to have safe staffing ratios. Also Wales has uh, enacted similar legislation. This is all based upon our research that we've been doing in Europe. And more recently, the state of Queensland and Australia has also implemented government mandated ratios. Uh, in terms of the impact of our research on educational policy, uh, this does not influence Spain 
directly, but indirectly it does. We found that every 10% increase in the proportion of nurses in hospitals that have a baccalaureate degree is associated with a 7% decline in mortality. Now, you've already made the decision to have all of your nurses have baccalaureate degrees be because you're in the European Union. Nurses can't come and work in Spain that have the minimum level of education required in the European Union, which is only 10 years of general education and two years of vocational education. So one thing that our research did is it motivated the European Parliament to introduce for the first time an educational pathway for baccalaureate nursing, saying to all the countries of the European Union, some of which have very few baccalaureate nurses, you have to start moving in this other direction. They haven't removed the low standard, so there are two standards now, but I think eventually that will come. So our research has helped bring professional nursing from the background of health services and health policy into the foreground. Nurses are taking on ever greater and more central roles in healthcare. Good nursing care has a profound effect on whether patients survive surgery, avoid infections and other complications of hospital care, and are better able to manage their discharge uh, in community living arrangements. Now, resources are finite, and all of our countries are struggling to pay for health care, but our research shows that without doubt, investments in nursing return very good value, even in a context of limited resources. That our nurses are an important national and global asset and that we should employ them wisely and do all we can to create enough budgeted positions so that our citizens can really benefit from high quality health care. Thank you so much for this award and the opportunity to share our research with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ekin, for sharing your thoughts. Uh, the painter Maria Dinares will now present you with his original work used to commemorate this ceremony. Uh, please, uh, Mr. Maria Dinares, could help me with this. Colin Josep Arimany, first deputy major of the City Council and Balmas University Foundation, Commissioner for Medicine. Dr. Arimany, good morning. Good morning, magnific rector de la Universitat de Vic, Universitat Central de Catalunya, Dr. Linda Aiken, Dr. Mireia Subirana i Paola Galvany, director general de la FUP, president del Consorci, director general de l'Hospital de Santa Creu, autoritats polítiques, acadèmiques, doctors i doctores, senyores i senyors. Dr. Lindan Aiken, I welcome you to the city of Vic to accept the honoris causa distinction of the University of Vic. Our city just has millennial university tradition. The origin of our universitat in the modern era is based on the school of nursery and teachers. Many thanks for being here today. Congratulations. Em plau veure que la nostra universitat concedeix la seva més alta distinció acadèmica a una persona que ha treballat, que ha investigat i que ha lluitat tant per dignificar i posar valor de la professió d'infermera de tot el món. La nostra universitat, la Universitat de Vic, 
té un model de governança regida per una fundació universitària Balmes de característiques de naturalesa pública i de gestió privada i vocació municipalista. I també amb un model federatiu des del gener del 2014 amb la Fundació Universitària del Bages i que aquest any celebrem els 20 anys de la instauració de l'OUBIC. A la nostra ciutat comptem amb estudis d'infermeria des de l'any 1975 i de rang universitari des de l'any 81. El curs passat van celebrar els 35 anys d'inici d'aquella escola d'infermeria, avui Facultat de Ciències de la Salut i del Benestar, des d'on se l'ha proposat com a candidata per rebre el doctorat honoris causa que avui li oterga la universitat. Des d'aleshores, la professió d'infermera ha avançat molt, la medicina ha incorporat avanços increïbles i les institucions hospitalàries són molt millors. Però aquests canvis no van associats als riscos. Tot recordem a l'editorial del professor Cyril Chandler, l'any 99 a la revista Lancet, que deia que la medicina abans era simple, era poc efectiva i relativament segura. I avui dia és molt complexa, és efectiva, però és potencialment perillosa. També la doctora Linda Conn, l'any 99, en un informe que va fer parlant de l'error és humano, posava a l'altaveu la importància de la seguretat clínica i la seguretat del pacient, que és el que ha treballat molt la doctora Linda Aiken. I també el doctor James Rayson, de la Universitat de Manchester, l'any 2000, ens parlava de l'error humà en l'àmbit assistencial i ens explicava sobretot la teoria de lo que s'ha anomenat el formatge suís per explicar la manera de minimitzar els errors i accidents a l'assistència sanitària. L'any 2000, la resolució de l'Organització Mundial de la Salut proposava a tots els països membres prestar la màxima atenció en seguretat al pacient. I a l'actualitat, cada dia s'estableix la cultura de seguretat del pacient amb la intervenció de tots els professionals, essent la infermeria un puntal bàsic per desenvolupar aquests tipus d'accions. Però després de parlar d'aquest tema tan important que és la seguretat del pacient, permeteu-me que parli dels infermers i de les infermeres, que continuen sent persones valentes i fràgils com a les hores, persones que cada dia donen el millor de si mateixes als altres, que conviuen diàriament amb l'alegria del naixement i amb la situació de la mort, amb la promesa de la recuperació i el plany de la malaltia, amb l'esperança i la incapacitat, amb la represa i amb la impotència, amb la superació i la degradació. Aquestes persones són les que ens fan costat en els moments més delicats de les nostres vides, com més espantats estem, com més indefensos som i com més febles físicament i anímicament. Elles són al nostre costat per ajudar-nos, per consolar-nos i per guarir-nos. Crec perfectament que el Pla Bolònia va fer justícia a la infermeria, dic, de l'estat espanyol. Fins llavors tenien un topall, una infermera no podia ser doctora, i per tant aquí sí que la recerca de la doctora Aiken és una aportació molt sòlida i rigorosa en línia d'apoderar les infermeres amb estudis de rang universitari i de formació contínua. I en línia reduir el nombre de pacients per infermera, parla de sobretot del pacient, ha treballat molt amb l'anàlisi de dotacions d'infermeres i satisfacció dels pacients, analitzant també la seva mortalitat. Ha volgut garantir la qualitat i la seguretat de les cures. Aquestes són fites que la Facultat de Ciències de la Salut i el Benestar té molt present en tots els seus estudis i que la universitat assumeix com a propis. Aquesta subció de voluntats i responsabilitats la posen avui dia de manifest de la manera més rellevant, que és otorgar el doctorat d'honoris causes de la universitat a la persona que millor ha defensat els interessos i la professionalitat de la infermeria, amb investigacions rigoroses i evidències científiques innegables la doctora Linda Aiken. Espero que el fruit de la seva recerca, les seves evidències i les seves propostes siguin assumides pel nostre professorat, pels nostres estudiants i per tots els professionals de la salut, les gerències, les instàncies polítiques responsables del sistema públic de salut. Moltes gràcies, moltes gràcies a la doctora Aiken per les vostres investigacions i pel vostre treball constant per tal que siguin aplicades al dia a dia als hospitals i centres de salut de tants i tants països. Congrueixos i moltes gràcies. Dr. Aiken, again, 
Welcome to Catalonia. Welcome to the University of Vic, Central University of Catalonia. Today we are, we are honored to welcome you into our university. I usually tell visitors to our university that Catalonia is a small country. Small country with a long history. It's a country of freedom, of creativity, a country that looks ahead. And in the future, we hope to develop our full potential. Our ancient country is currently part of Spain, but we have not renounced our sovereignty, and one day we aspire to attain full recognition within the European family of nations. Catalonia has its own distinctive character. We have much to offer in the fields of art and culture, in business, and in all aspects of the human activity. We have heard Catalan today. It's a language spoken by 11 million people across four countries, Andorra, Spain, France, and Italy. This large uh, region includes 22 Catalan partner universities with 500,000 students, 40,000 teachers, and 12 major science and technology parks. Uh, our own university, a young institution for teaching and research, was founded by the Parliament of Catalonia in 1997. But we have deep roots going back to the 9th and 10th centuries, originating in the cathedral schools of the Middle Ages. Our mission is to be a driving force for innovation and knowledge in the service of our country and the wider world. We focus on service and all-around training for our students, producing future graduates who are ethically minded, enthusiastic professionals, and socially responsible in their fields. The international outlook of our education projects is fully aligned with the concerts of Catalan society and Europe as a whole. We consider our international exchanges and internships to be essential academic pursuits. In a similar vein, we believe that our students and teachers should be aware of national and international benchmarks of excellence in different fields of knowledge. Dr. Aiken, you are a prestigious international expert in the field of professional nursing, research, and management. And, it, and that is why we have proposed this honorary doctorate for you. Your academic and scientific merits, in particular your innovations in nursing management systems, have been described by Do Dr. Mireya Subirana's magnific magnificent oration and the speech of Dr. Arimat. Our university doctoral community welcomes you among its number. Your expertise and initiative in enhancing professional nursing and patient welfare worldwide will be recognized by our students our teachers, and the university as a whole. This is the significance of today's even recognition of your successful career and continuing achievement, welcoming you among us so that we can learn from you and your innovations and fulfill our own potential. Men and women around the world working together to advance the nursing profession and nursing knowledge contribute through these initiatives to a better quality of life for all. University courses in nursing go back some 35 years in our city, as uh, Dr. Ariman mentioned. The healthcare field has flourished here. Since the first courses in nursing were held, health and welfare disciplines have been in the head of the growth of the university. Currently, we offer courses in Big and Manresa in nursing, social work, human nutrition and dietetics, speech therapy, podiatry, physiotherapy, psychology and biosciences. And we expect to open the Faculty of Medicine for the 2017-2018, next September, academic year. This will be the culmination of years of progress. Our nursing specialist proposed the award of this honorary doctorate because of your research in this field and your in-depth knowledge of the issues facing the, prof the profession worldwide. 
Your reports and publications testify to the fact that high quality professional nursing enhances the recovery of patients in the care nurses. You have analyzed how higher nursing staff levels lead to lower mortality rates and enhanced recovery of post-operative patients. We have shown how less stressed professionals are more efficient and useful for health services. You have shown how further training enhanced professional quality and self-esteem. You have promoted the magnet certification scheme to distinguish centers with excellent nursing results for patients, where nurses have a high level of job satisfaction, where there is low staff turnover and effective processes for handling complaints, where nurses are encouraged to take part in data collection and decision making about patients, where nursing supervisors value their staff and involve them in nursing practices based on research. You have worked for many years to develop the profession in countries around the world. Too often, nursing training has been insufficient to meet the challenges of the work required and nurses have lacked proper recognition of their contribution to the overall recovery of patients. Too often, nurses have failed, undervalued or overlooked professionally and socially. You have contributed decisively for the well-being of these professionals who are vital for effective health care services. Dr. Aiken, the medal that we have presented to you is a distinction shared by all the recipients of honorary doctorates at our university. It is inspired by the initial letter A of a decorative Carolingian alphabet. The original gold piece was found in the monastery of Conk in France and reminds us of the origins of higher education in Europe in monastic scriptorium and cathedral schools. Uh, it's a capital A without a crossbar, symbolizing growth and convergence toward the zenith of knowledge, with the sun at the apex illuminating the human mind. During solemn ceremonies such as today's, members of the doctoral community of the University of the Big Central University of Catalonia wear a medal in the form of a ring carrying the inscription Scientia Patriarchia Impedere Vitam, that is, use life in the service of knowledge and the community. This motto sums up the mission of the university to serve the community and to learn through teaching, research, and knowledge transfer. The Honorary Doctorate Medal is formed of the same ring depicting the sun's ray radiation out of the whole of society through knowledge, research, and innovation. The Doctoral Medal symbolizes the unity of knowledge and charges us to work in the service of the wider community. It also represents a link to other researchers around the world working in the service of the all humankind. To end this speech, I would like to congratulate Dr. Mireya Subirana for her oration, outlining the contribution of Dr. Aiken, particularly her work as a researcher and research uh, leader. I would like to thank Dr. Paola Galvan, who has sponsored Dr. Aiken at this award ceremony at the University of Big Central University of Catalonia. And I would like to thank the, uh, the artist Maria Dinares for his donation of the commemorative uh, illustration, which we have used as the emblem for Dr. Lyndon Aiken's honorary doctorate. I would like to thank uh, the, the university doctoral community for their generous support and welcome for our new honorary doctor. And of course, I must thank all those who have contributed to this honorary doctorate award, uh, especially uh, Cor de la Universidad de Vic. Many thanks to all of you, members of the management board of the university, members of the board of trustees of the Balmes University Foundation, teaching and administrative staff, students, visitors, thank you for joining us at this award ceremony. Welcome, Dr. Aiken, to the University of Big Central University of Catalonia. You are at home. Uh, 
uh, now please stand for the university anthem. Thank you very much for being here with us today. We now invite all of you to join us outside for a cup of cava.